Are you thinking of moving to the Colombia area but don't want to live in the city limits? In this video, I'm going to cover the disadvantages of living in Irmo. From the traffic congestion to the employment commute, you might just find out why Irmo might not be the ideal place for you. Irmo is a suburb that's not too far from the city but still has all the big city conveniences while still having outdoor recreation and it is also near the lake. But although there are many great things about Irmo, it isn't immune to having its own shed of disadvantages. So let's dive into the first one. Traffic congestion. The town of Irmo is just under seven square miles, so area-wise it's quite small. Unfortunately, having so many businesses, homes, and schools in a small area contributes to traffic. Traffic can get congested along Harbison Boulevard, especially because of all the restaurants and retailers there. Typically though, Harbison Boulevard only gets congested on the weekends and before holidays when many people come from out of town to go shopping. Traffic can also get back up along I-26 and Lake Murray Boulevard in Irmo. If you can, you might want to avoid driving along Lake Murray Boulevard during peak rush hours when it gets congested, especially from 3.30 to 6.30 p.m. on weekdays when it gets a little crazy. Another reason for traffic congestion can be caused by the trains in Irmo, which brings me to my next disadvantage, railroad tracks. Irmo is a railroad town, which means traffic can be delayed due to trains coming through. Irmo has a few railroad crossings on busy roadways, with trains going through on occasion, so you may get stuck behind a train and have to wait longer to get to your destination. Another setback because of the railroad is the noise from the trains. Especially if you live closer to the railroad crossings or are just driving by, it can be quite noisy when trains travel through. And more recently, there has been some construction and restoration of the railroad track that had caused some traffic to have to be rerouted or backed up. So expect delays now and then because of the railroad. Limited housing is my next point. I mentioned earlier that Irmo is just under seven square miles in area. So because of its small size, that means it just doesn't have room for much more housing development. So there is a shortage of new homes for sale. However, many apartment buildings have gone up in the Irmo area in recent years. And some home builders have purchased smaller lots to build their homes on. But other than that, finding a new home in Irmo can be challenging. However, if you are okay buying a used home, there are always used homes on the market, but the amount of homes for sale here might be less than the buyer's demand. And this can lead to higher home prices and also competition on the same houses. Plus, Irmo's limited development can affect the local economy since there are less options for new businesses. Here is one of the things I really don't like about Irmo, and it's the rental license. There is an ordinance here that says that no owner shall operate any residential rental rental unit unless that owner holds a current rental license issued by the town of Irmo. These licenses are not transferable from any owner to another. The license year starts on January 1st and ends on December 31st. Now, of course, this rental license is only if you decide to buy a property that you want to rent in Irmo. However, if you are wanting to buy your primary home, of course, you're not going to be subject to this fee. If you decide to rent your Irmo real estate without a license, you can be charged with a missed demeanor fined up to $1,000 and or imprisonment for up to 30 days. The fee to obtain this rental license is $250 a year and you have until April 15th to pay it. If you miss the deadline, you will be assessed a late fee of $500. My other disadvantage is commute to work. The downside to living in any suburb when you work in the bigger city is that you need to drive further to work and living in Irmo while working in Colombia will require a longer commute. The upside of this is that the commute from Irmo to Colombia isn't long at all. Irmo is located northwest of Colombia and it takes about 20 minutes to drive to downtown Colombia along Interstate 26. But although 20 minutes isn't a long commute time, driving along I-26 can be tricky, especially when you go through what we call here malfunction junction. This is where there are a series of exits and entrance ramps that are closer together along I-26 and traffic can be stressed to maneuver through here. As a result, there have been many accidents in malfunction junction. And if you aren't familiar with this part of the highway, it can be easy to miss your exit. So be sure you are in the correct lane to exit ahead of time. Other than malfunction junction, or if there is road construction going on, the traffic along I-26 really isn't too bad. If you are coming from a larger metropolitan area like Atlanta, for example, the traffic in the Columbia area will seem like a breeze. Of course,
course, I always like to mention to people that when you move to South Carolina or any town here, especially in the Midlands, you will always experience heat, humidity, and bugs. Heat, humidity, and bugs are prevalent here in the hotter months of the year. It's true that the Columbia area is quite humid in the summertime. In fact, South Carolina has a higher humidity index that reaches into the 80s. So when the humidity is mixed in with the heat and higher temperatures reaching up to 94 degrees, it can feel very hot and muggy here in the summer. So make sure you have adequate working air conditioning in your home and vehicle. And of course, lots of bugs and critters come out in the springtime and stay through the summer. But the mosquitoes are the worst from July through September. So you may want to stock up on bug repellent and citronella for the mid to late summertime or even treat your yard for mosquitoes. The good news is that by mid-October, the bugs are gone and fall is one of the most pleasant and beautiful seasons in Armo. Now, it is important to know that if you have bugs problem in your home or around your home, the best thing to do is call a pest control company. When I first moved to South Carolina, I encountered that issue and I had the pest control company coming every quarter to treat my house and I never saw them again. So although Irmo has its downsides, I believe the pros of this small town that has it all outweigh the cons and Irmo residents really do enjoy a higher quality of life. I'm going to be talking of the pros of living in Irmo in a future video. If you want to know the reasons why you might regret moving to Columbia, South Carolina, make sure to watch this video. If you made it to the end of this video, I'm going to ask you to please subscribe to my channel for more local info. And if you know of somebody that will find this information useful, please share the video with them. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next week.